And afterwards, what we're going to do is, um, praise God, Abby, if I can have you after the service, we'll talk about this, play a little bit, you know, the piano, and while they're changing and getting ready for the baptismal service, and then we'll make our way right out here. And uh, if I can have a couple people that can help us, that uh, can get the canopies up for us, that would be great. They're in the side room, Brother Tim, maybe could help us. And some guys here to help us get that set up and put them right in front of the garage there. So we wonderful folks won't get rained on if it's still raining, okay? Amen. We wanted to have you all at the picnic tables and eating and things like that. But uh, in Ohio, it's hard to plan things outside. Can somebody say amen? amen. We have all kinds of weather here in Ohio. Praise God. Uh, we're we're going to go into the word of God here today. And... Uh, I've got, I don't know, five or six, seven people we're baptizing today. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to go in the Word of God in the New Testament book of John, Gospel according to John. And it will be the 14th verse, chapter, verse 25. 14th chapter of John, verse 25. In the New Testament, and may the Lord give us help, grace, the anointing of thy spirit. O oh God, I pray today. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14 and verse 25. Are you there, church? It said, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. This is the main text. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I, I go away and come again unto you. If, I, if, if ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Uh, this morning I'd like to minister on the thought here today. Having the peace of God in troubled times. Now, folk, yeah, that's it. That's it. Now, you folks, you know that these days that we're living in are not normal. Things have changed over the decades, over the years, and they're getting worse. You see, we're going in a certain direction. That's not good. But I, what do we do as Christians? What do we do as children of God? What's our responsibility? How are we to act or react or how are we to live in this time? Well, I pray this will minister to your heart. I pray that the Lord will speak to you and comfort you and help you here today. Having the peace of God in troubled times, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord, we love you. Father, we're nothing without you. I cannot do this without you, Father. I need your wisdom. I need your anointing. I need your touch. I need, uh, Father, a miracle in my life. I need healing in my life, God. There are many here today that need healing, Father. Lord, I believe there are some here today, perhaps all of us, I don't know, you know, that maybe the devil has been attacking their thoughts and their minds, trying to put fear and anxiety into them. Lord, but I pray today that we would have a, a miracle of the peace of God, the supernatural presence and peace of God would fill our hearts and our souls and our minds, comfort and strengthen the body of Christ. Thank you, God. We love you. If there are any lost here today, I pray they'll give their heart to Christ, that they would get saved and come to know the Lord. If there are any that have any sin, I pray, Father, the last forgiveness and repent of it today. I pray that we'll walk out of here different than when we came in. We love and praise you as we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen and amen. And you may be seated. Having the peace of God in troubled times. Without a doubt, folks, you know that we're living in turbulent times. You don't really have to be that spiritual to understand that. Even people that are not saved, people that are not serving God even know that we're living in turbulent times. Everything around us now is shaky. We have the highest inflation in 40 years. We're basically making 9.1% less than we were a year ago. And instead of making $100 now, you're making $90.90. Many of our retirement funds, our 401K, our stock market, mutual funds have been cut in half. Personally, uh, in the last uh, 18, 20 months or so, I've lost $16,000 
$1,000 of my retirement investment. A little over half of my retirement is gone. We have another strand of COVID, and many are getting sick. I don't know what kind of strand it is. I don't know what kind of COVID it is. And sometimes I wonder if there was another virus that was planted or whatever it might be. It seems the United States is unstable. I know now we are heading into recession. There are companies now that are laying off people, their jobs. I know that Ohio Health has laid off over 600 employees now in their IT section. I know that uh, I know that some of the other stores are also Hobby Lobby is laying off because people are not buying their product because we have to save the money because the gas prices are so high. And so they have to put gas in their car. The country is basically split in half, split in half on political, social, moral, and religious issues. We have open borders where anyone can walk across our national line. It seems we have no protection. We have drug problem. We have a murder problem. We have sex trafficking problems. We have the most corrupt administration in the White House that has ever probably been in the history of America. The law seems to be powerless, and the deep state runs a whole lot deeper, I think, than you and I ever thought that it did. What's going on today makes Watergate years ago look good. We have immoral, dishonest, and corrupt government officials that are lying and not being honest with the American people. We have half the country that's for abortion and the murdering of unborn babies. And so what we're finding today is they have a lot of people that disregard the value of human life. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. Listen to this. Before you were born, I sanctified you. That means that you're a human life in that womb. God saw you. That's a miracle. Every child is a miracle. That is a human being. And yet there are people that say it's okay to slaughter them, to kill them, even up just before the birth of that child. Uh, you can say what you want. You can make all the excuses that you want, but it boils down to this. Uh, we have a sin problem in America. I'm going to say we got a sin problem in America. We have a sin problem in the world. We have a sin problem with, within humanity. The human race is sick. The human race is spiritually sick. In fact, Isaiah said it like this. Uh, the whole head is sick. The whole heart faints from the sole of the foot even to the head. There is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Uh, they have not been closed or bound up or soothed with ointment. And that's a perfect picture of where humanity is today. All over the world, not just in America, but everywhere. But let me tell you, they can mock us. They can gawk at us. They can laugh at us. They can criticize us as Christians or the church of the living God. They can tease us. But the only answer is to fall on our faces before the Lord Jesus Christ and to repent of our sins and our wickedness and to surrender our hearts and our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only answer because Jesus is the one that changes the heart. Jesus the one that changes that person. He's the one that cleanses the heart. He's the one that can deliver you from the powers of darkness and from the bondages of sin. He's the one that will set the captive free, for that's what my Bible tells me very clearly. He's the one that can give you new life. The Bible tells us that he can give us abundant life and glorious life and overflowing life. Not just life, but overflowing life. Jesus said, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. It's not a trickle, but it's a river. Hallelujah. It is a river springing up into everlasting life. And every heart, every soul, every person that comes to know Jesus as their Savior. It's not dead religion. It's overflowing abundant life that we have in Christ. And so we know it's a, that it's very important that in this time, in turbulent times, that we as Christians live by faith. And although things may look out of control, we know that Bible prophecy is coming to pass. Can you say amen to that? We've got to keep in mind what the Word of God says. We know that the Word of God is coming to pass. We know that Bible prophecy is coming to pass. The prophecy and the Word of God are being fulfilled as we speak. Folks, can I say that we are living in the end times? I want to tell you that now. Uh, this is not just pastoral or preaching cliche. I want you to know and I want to remind you the time and the day in which we're living in. I want to tell you right now that we're living in the end of times. We're in the last days. These are perilous times. The Bible talks about the beginning of sorrows. Uh, we're living in a very evil and a dark time now in this world and in America. Uh, the devil is given certain latitude according to the word of God. The Bible says that there are many antichrists, but then the stage is also being set for the rising of the antichrist. Now, oh, that's right. Now, listen to me. A.W. Tozer said this. A.W. Tozer, great man of God, he's in heaven right now. He said this, while it looks like things are out of control behind the scenes, there is a God who's not surrendered to his authority. Oh, come on, church. Uh, somebody got to get this here today. I want to read it again. He said, while it looks like things are out of control behind the scenes, there's a God that's not surrendered to his authority. Regardless of how things look, regardless of how bad things may seem, our God reigns. Our God is sovereign. Our God's in control.
control. Our God will never surrender to the devil. Never, hallelujah. And although the devil is manifesting his ugly head, there's coming a time when he'll be cast into the lake of fire. The enemy of our soul will be bound up and he'll be cast out. Hallelujah. Can you say bound up and cast out? He'll be bound up and cast out. You remind him that that's what's coming ahead. That's his future. But our future is to be with God. Our future is to be the Lord of glory. Our future is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now, during the time of the prophet Habakkuk, it's one of, the, one of my favorite books. only has three, three chapters in it, but yet I really believe it speaks for today. In the prophet Habakkuk, uh, uh, things look pretty bad too. You know that? Uh, but God was still in control, and God was working behind the scenes the entire time. I mean, it seemed that God didn't hear Habakkuk's prayer. I mean, Habakkuk's praying. He's crying out to God. He's thinking, God, why don't you hear me? I'm crying out to you like some of us might pray. Lord, don't you know what I'm going through? Don't you know our situation? Look at our country. Look at our land. Look what's happening. God, do you not hear my cry? Do you not hear my prayer? I can tell you, God heard every time. God is all-knowing everywhere, omniscient, present God, and he knows. It appeared that evil was getting away with their wicked deeds in Habakkuk's time, but God had a plan. God was in the control, not the devil. And regardless of how bad things may look today, let me encourage the saints of God that God is in control and that God has a plan. God has a plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we see that plan coming to pass according to the Bible. Just like God said would happen is happening just like the Bible tells us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now in our text, Jesus said this. He said in John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Now listen to this. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled and don't let your heart be afraid. Now we see in this scripture there's a peace that comes from God. It's a supernatural peace. You can't explain it. You just know that you got it. You just know that you know it's something of heaven. It's something of glory. It's something of God. And, and he's the source of this peace. But then there's another peace that the world gives. Now God says, I don't give you that kind of peace. See, there's another. See, I give you the peace of God, not like the world gives you. See, the world has what we call a false peace, and many people are fooled by this peace, thinking they're okay when they're not. See, God doesn't want our hearts to be uh, troubled with worry and troubled with fear and anxiety. He wants us to trust Him, to trust His Word, to stand upon the Word of God, to believe Him by faith. Some trust in horses and some in chariots, but we'll remember the name of the Lord our God. But the fact is, many Christians do have troubled hearts, and many Christians do live in fear. Many are secretly plagued with panic. Some are plagued with turmoil and sleepless nights. And you know this, that fear and anxiety will wear you out. Come on, church. Fear and anxiety will exhaust you, and it will wear you out. Although we are not to worry, and although we are not to fear, we find ourselves many times struggling with worry and with fear. There isn't one here today. It doesn't matter how spiritual you may be, but there isn't one here today that has not struggled at one time or another with worry or anxiety or fear in their lives. It's like a plague that attacks us. Can someone say amen to that? Jesus told us that he would give us his peace, but few believers can honestly say that they enjoy a constant peace of mind. I mean, I'll be honest with you, church. I haven't always had the, the peace of God in my heart. I haven't always had the peace of mind in my life. Peace may come and, and go at times, and, and yet many are left with worry and stress and fear and anxiety. Now, I mean, you love God, but you worry about this. You're worried about the bills. You're worried about your health. You're worried about different things. You're worried about your lost loved ones. But I know that you love God. I know that you have faith in God. You're doing your best to trust God. And yet there are times when the overwhelming sensation of fear attacks you and you struggle to have the peace of God. Do I have a witness today? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Now, beloved friends, I think the devil wants us to be afraid. 
I know that. That's one of the tools he uses. That's one of the tactics he uses. He wants you to be afraid. The devil wants us to fear. He doesn't want us to believe in God or trusting in the word of God. The devil doesn't want us trusting in the promises of God. The devil wants us to think that God isn't with us or that God will fail you. But I've got news for you today. God cannot fail. And God cannot fail you. The Bible said if God be for us, who can be against us? Let me tell you this today, that God is for those that are for him. I said God is for those that are for him. I want to ask you a question here today. What enemy can God not defeat? What enemy can God not defeat? Is there a Goliath in your life? Is there a Philistine in your life? Are there Jebusites or Canaanites? Is there a mountain standing before you? That's nothing for God. God can take his finger and flick the enemy. Hallelujah. I mean, God can take the enemy. Just one word. Hallelujah. We serve a big God. We've made God little. We think that God can't do anything. I tell you, he can do more than you can ever comprehend. He's a big God. He's a mighty God. He's a powerful for God, and he can take down any enemy that might be confronting you. Hallelujah. Praise God. He'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. Now, I know there are certain high-ranking people in government today that want us to fear. Do you see it? Do you see what's going on the past couple of years? They want us to fear, that fear and intimidation. Some companies, that's how they rule and manage their employees, by fear and intimidation. But here is what Zacharias prophesied about the coming Messiah. He said this in Luke 1, 74 and 75. He said, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, hallelujah, listen to that, being delivered by the hand of our enemies, might serve. Serve God or serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of, of our life. You see, this is why Jesus came to this earth and died for sinful man so that we could walk with God without fear and join his peace all the days of our lives so that we would have no fear but the peace of mind and heart all of our days. And this even includes days of suffering and days of turmoil and testing and trials of our faith, even uncertainty. It means both good days and bad days, no matter what comes our way, we are to enjoy the peace of God at all times. Now, I would not be preaching to you if that Bible did not teach that to us, but I'm going to prove that here today, that God tells us, the Word tells us, it is possible, whether trial or no trial, good day, bad day, highs, lows, in between, it's possible for you and I to walk and to have the mind, the peace and the mind of God in our lives on a daily basis. Zechariah added these words about Jesus saying to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. He was saying that Jesus would guide all his children into the path of peace, not into restlessness, not into emptiness or fear, but into peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And at the birth, the angels sang glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. His gospel is called the gospel gospel of peace and he promised of himself saying these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace peace is what the gospel is all about Acts 10 and 36 the word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace notice that preaching peace through Jesus Christ Romans 14 and 17 for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost hallelujah Amen. Peace is even the fruit of the Spirit. It's possible that you and I can have the supernatural peace of God in our hearts, in our minds, at all times. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, church. Now, 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 I know in this world, I know that we'll face tribulation. I know we'll face persecution, fiery trials. I get that. I know that we'll be tempted. I know the devil, he's going to war against you. He'll try to come against you, try to bring you down. We'll suffer for the sake of Christ. The winds of adversity will try to topple the house of faith that we build on the rock of our salvation, which is Jesus Christ. And I know we will be given the bread of persecution. The Bible talks about the bread of affliction. But still we're to serve him in righteousness, full of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Paul's prayer for 
all the believers was this. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. In every way, meaning in every situation. No matter what you're going through, there's a supernatural peace of God that can carry you through that you'll know everything's going to be all right. My beloved, are we full of peace at all times? In every situation in our lives, in your everyday waking hour, are you full of absolute peace? Well, let me give you the definition of peace here today. The definition of the word peace would mean inner contentment. It means to have an inner calm within our heart, within our soul and spirit. It means to have serenity or we can say tranquility. Peace also means free from all strife. It means at rest. It means an undisturbed spirit. And truth be told, the world doesn't see this serenity in many of us in the church. They've got to look at the church, and I pray that they'll see something different. But I'll be honest with you. The day that we're living in today, it seems that the world can look at the church and not see much of the peace of God in them. In times of crisis, a lot of us are not ruled by a calm, undisturbed spirit. And too often others see us panic-stricken whenever we have a trial. Some kind of whatever something in our life, difficulty, they see us worried and they see us frustrated. And yet it's God's will that we live, that we live free of all care and all worry. And we know this and we say that we believe it. And uh, the scriptures confirm it. But few of us have entered into this walk of living in the reality of God's peace. We have spotted peace, if you would, uh, but not continual peace. Uh, we have peace today, but we don't tomorrow. We have peace this morning, but not tonight, depending on circumstances that happen in your life. What God's trying to tell us here in the Word is that regardless of circumstances, regardless of what life brings you, you have this peace of God, that the source is God. It comes from heaven. It's supernatural. It is of the Lord that can he can put in you, deposit in you, and bring you and carry you through whatever things you go through in life. Now, here's the Lord's will for us. The scripture says this, and Jackie Chevalier hit this nail on the head yesterday because she put this verse on Facebook. I already had this down. Jackie, you almost stole my message today, but you had it right on. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then it says, as a result of that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And the reason why we lack God's peace is because we lack, be honest, church, we lack bringing everything to God in prayer. Come on. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We have the instructions. We have God's word telling us what to do. But a lot of times we're not reading the book and we're not doing what it says. And therefore we're full of anxiety. You know us men, I don't know what it is about us. But we'll buy something that has to be put together. Whether it be a bicycle or entertainment center whatever it is. And we'll get it out of the box and we'll see the instructions and we'll toss them to the side. Come on, man, you know what I'm talking about. And you say this. You say, I don't have time for that. I can figure this out. And so you're trying to put the thing together. About halfway through, after spending two, three hours on this, you realize you're not making any headway. You finally go say, where did I put those instructions? And you go dig them out of the box. Hey, Amen. And you read them, and you do what it says, and you're able to put it together. If we'll read that book, if we'll take the time to listen and to read the instructions that God has given us, apply what he says in our lives, your life will go a whole lot better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. We'll do everything in our power to try to fix it, everything in our power to try to figure out, make it happen before coming to God in prayer about it. Why? Because we're stubborn. Amen. That's why. That's why. 
We're stubborn. Many times we come to God as a last resort rather than going God first. We don't pray because we don't believe he'll answer. Come on, church. I said we don't play, pray because we don't believe he'll answer. No, no, no. Let me say it this way. He doesn't answer because we don't pray. How about that? He don't answer because he don't. we don't pray. We don't pray or we ask amiss. Every revival was always preceded by prayer, lots of prayer, sometimes decades of prayer. The reason the church lacks the peace of God is because we're not bringing every need to him in prayer and supplication. But let me tell you something today that encourage you. God delights in his people delighting themselves in him. You see, God wants to bless you. God wants to meet the need in your life. God wants to answer your needs. God wants to do great and mighty things. But the church must learn to go before the Lord and ask and to pray and to cry out to God and to bring our need. Or we can say our supplication unto God. The God of heaven knows what you need before you pray. But when you pray, Pray, you're expressing your faith in that word that God hears and that God will answer. Yeah. Hallelujah. The scripture says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. The thanksgiving is the attitude. Are we thankful unto God? Are we thanking him? He says, he says, let your request be made known unto God. Now listen, the blessing in making your request known isn't that you come out of the prayer room with your prayer suddenly answered. It doesn't mean that your sickness or your pain is immediately gone. It can happen. I know that. Maybe your problem's not solved, but rather it's that you emerge with your heart changed because God's given you his peace. That's the difference, my friend. It's this incredible peace that passes all understanding. It's not something that the natural man can comprehend or grasp. This is a supernatural peace. That's the kind of peace that even though the problem isn't solved, you have this assurance that you know, that you know, that you know everything is going to be all right. God has got this. God is in control. And in that prayer closet, God has reminded you of who he is and the assurance that you have in Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Glory. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your pastor, I'm nothing, but I'm sick and tired of the lies of the devil. It's time to kick him out. Kick him out. Kick him out. You don't belong in my church. You don't belong in my marriage. You don't belong in my children. You don't belong in my family. You don't belong in my business. You don't belong in my ministry. Out you go in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I know the devil's been messing with you. Because he's messing with me. <laughs> Anytime you try to do something for God, the devil's going to mess with you. You make up in your mind and your heart you're going to draw closer to God. The devil says, oh, no, you're not. You made up in your mind, I'm going to pray more. The devil says, oh, no, you're not. You made up in your mind, I'm going to get in that word more. The devil says, oh, no, you're not. You make up in your mind, you're going to get more involved in the church and ministry. The devil says, oh, no, you're not. And we're listening to him. Why are we listening to him? Why? Don't listen to him. Listen to God. Listen to the word. The, the devil will condemn you. The devil will say you're worthless. The devil will say you're no good. The devil says God can't forgive. The devil says God can't use you. But that's not what this book says. This is a book of love. This is a book of redemption. This is a book of hope. This is a book that God says he forgives and God restores. This is a book that says that God uses people like you and I. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, 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 hallelujah, my God, hallelujah. <laughs> I pray that you're not coming here because of this beautiful building. <laughs> you're not here for the building, you're here for God. You're here for the Lord. You're here for Jesus. Amen. You're here because you want to see the Lord. You want to experience God in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. When we go to the secret closet of prayer, unburdening our souls, weeping and making our requests known to God, that's called supplication. We come away with peace. The sickness may still be there. The trouble's still there. But we're changed. The strife, the fear, and anxiety are gone. That's the miracle in itself. Amen. 
All right, now I've got to hurry, okay? <laughs> How do we obtain such peace of mind in these troubled times in which we're living in? How do we obtain this kind of peace in these troubled times? Number one, it is impossible to have true peace without Christ first living in you. First of all, I got one point, I got some other points, but I won't make them today. But uh, this is it, folks. First of all, it's impossible to have true peace without Christ living in you. Scripture says this, Ephesians 2 and 14, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. There are people that I've talked to through the years that say that they have peace. I've talked to all kinds of people through the years that have said this and yet they're not saved. They're not living for God. They're living in sin. And they'll say things like this to me. They'll say, Pastor, I have peace. I've talked to people. They'll say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to die. I have rest. I mean, God and me are good, but their, their peace is not real peace. Understand, it's not real rest. It's a delusion, the result of a satanic lie. It's a false peace that will ultimately bring destruction. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. That means spiritual separation from God into a lost and dying in hell. Now, many years ago, when I worked at Exxon Refinery, Baton Rouge, there was a co-worker of mine, a very nice man, a very religious man, but he wasn't born again. And uh, he was an Asian man. I believe he was from China. And, uh, and, uh, but he believed and practiced Taoism. Taoism is a mixture of religious beliefs and gods. And he believed in Jesus and we talked about Jesus, and we talked about the scriptures, and he knew many of the scriptures of the Bible, and he knew many of the sayings of Christ. And so he believed in the sayings of Christ, and he would apply those to the multiplicity of religions and gods that he served, and he would just try to use the teachings of Christ to make him a better man. And he basically believed in a mixture of religions to make sure that he was covered. But the interesting thing is that when the co-worker of mine, uh, when I would talk to, to him, there would be this certain peace in the office. There would be this certain peace. But the problem was it wasn't the genuine peace that comes from God. Every time I walked out from his cubicle or his office, it was uh, an imitation. It was a false peace that brought confusion. Beloved, you can't accept the multiplicity of religions to make sure that you're covered. The Bible tells us there's only one way. The Bible says this, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. There is no other way. It's only through Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes in the Father except by me. Jesus is the only way. He died for our sins. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 18, it talks about a people who go after other gods. And the scripture says, whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and to serve the gods of these nations. These people had a root, a, a root of poison growing in them and the Holy Ghost warned them. They were told that a curse would fall upon them because they left the Lord and had gone back to their sinful and their stubborn ways. This was a warning by God. He said, among those nations you shall find no rest, circle that, no rest, nor shall the sole of your foot have any resting place. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, the anguish of soul. He says, your life shall hang in doubt before you. You shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. And in addition to this curse, these words were preached to the idolaters. And the scripture says, when he hears the words of this curse, that he blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, even though I follow the dictates of my own heart. And God is saying that such people can't have real peace. And that peace that they claim to have is a delusion. I'm trying to tell you, my beloved, that devil's a deceiver. And there are people, listen, they say they got peace, but it's not real. They're deceived. They're not living for God. They're living for themselves. They're serving and worshiping other gods. And they think they're okay when they're lost. The Bible tells us that there's no peace for the wicked. The Bible tells us that. 
the wicked are like a tossing sea that cannot be quieted. God word, God's word tells us it's impossible for the sinner to know peace because they don't know the prince of peace. It's impossible. There's a saying goes, no God, no peace, no God, no peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm trying to tell you today, I had no peace in my life until I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I was searching. I was running. I was trying to find answers, but I didn't have any peace. I was looking. I was searching, but I couldn't find it in anything else. Listen to me, my beloved. I tell you that God's honest truth in my own life and testimony. I couldn't find peace in my career, and I had a good career. I couldn't find it in money, and I was making good money, but the Bible said, what does a prophet of man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul? Oh, God, I couldn't find it in money, and I was making good money. I couldn't find peace in things, but there came a day when I found it. I said there came a day when I found it. I found it. I found it. Hallelujah. And I found it on March the 20th, 1992. And I found it in Jesus. I found it in Christ. Oh, he calmed my raging storm. And once I was saved and washed and cleansed and forgiven, I had the peace in my heart that ran deep down in my soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have to understand my testimony. I was searching. I was talking to people, talking to different pastors, running from God, trying to find God. Had no peace in my heart. And I would talk to people, my Sunday school teacher and other uh, uh, Christians, and I would talk to them. And I would have a little peace for a little while. And every night I'd go to bed. I'd wake up in the next morning in turmoil. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God was dealing with me with my sin. And I didn't have any peace at all in my heart. Not my job. Not money. Not career nothing can give it to me all the education I have couldn't give it to me I didn't have any peace and so every night I'd go to bed I'd wake up the next morning I didn't have any peace all over again the same mess same turmoil this went on for six months but on that night my Sunday school teacher's house it was nearly midnight I got saved went into the back room got dealing with my heart conviction like you wouldn't believe my Sunday school teacher thought he said, you better hurry up and pray before you have a heart attack because I was shaking so bad under conviction. Why is it that we're so stubborn about not giving our heart to God? Why is it we resist him? Why? I don't know, but I did. But I don't know why I did after I got saved. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so, and so I, I, I was under conviction, and I prayed the sinner's prayer. I prayed and cried out to God. He didn't say repeat after me. I, I prayed myself. I prayed, he's right there, and I got saved. Well, I went home that night. It was a Friday night. I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning. From their house, time I got home, it was 2 o'clock in the morning when I went to bed. Well, Saturday morning, the next morning, I woke up at 6 a.m., no alarm clock. Four hours later, I woke up at 6 a.m. I was scared to go to sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this has been going on for six months because I wouldn't wake up without, uh, with, with anxiety and fear in my heart and, and no peace. And so I was afraid to go to sleep. Well, I woke up just like that, 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it's like the Lord Jesus said, good morning, Mark. Good, good, good hallelujah. I woke up. Listen, church, this is the truth. I woke up and I had the peace of God that passes all understanding. I woke up in his presence. I woke up in his glory. I didn't understand it then. I didn't know the, the, the theology of it then. I didn't understand the terminology of it then. But I woke up in the presence of God and I had the peace of God. I went into that living room in my PJs and I danced and I shouted and I praised and I worshiped and I magnified God. <laughs> And I was living in a duplex. <laughs> Didn't matter. Man, I tell you what, folks, hallelujah. I feel it now. Some of us just got to be reminded, you know, you love the Lord. You've been through some trials and hardships, and you've been through some battles and some wars. But God's brought you through. But some of us have lost our peace, amen, or the assurance that we once had. There's one thing the world can't handle. The world can't handle adversity. I mean, cults can't handle adversity other than to deny it by escaping into a world of illusion. And they won't face it head on. Their instruction is to go into a room and meditate, give yourself over to nothingness. But this false peace only lasts a day or two before the worries and the pressures of life come flooding back on them again. There's a, there are Christians that are now practicing Eastern meditation that's not according to the Holy Bible. I tell you the truth. 
We have Christians today that are leaving the fundamentals of Christianity, leaving the Lord, leaving the Word, leaving the practices of the Bible. And now they're meditating, they have Eastern meditation, and they're practicing other false religious cults and implementing them into the church, into Christianity. It's a mixture. It's the same thing that happened in Baal worship in the Old Testament. You can worship other gods, Baal and Jesus and God. It's a mixture which is not of the Lord. If, only, if they only knew how dangerous this is, this can lead you down to a path to eventually lose your way with God because you start believing in false teachings that are not of God. Paul said, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel which is not another. Paul also said, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Listen, America is now full of oriental doctrines that say that they can offer peace of mind. And they call this nirvana. Nirvana. And the definition of nirvana is a transcendent state in which there is neither suffering, desire, or sense of self. And the subject is released from the effects of karma and the cycle of death and rebirth. It represents the final goal of Buddhism. You understand where this is coming from? This is not peace of all, at all, but rather it's self-surrender to nothingness. God offers no such emptiness in the word or in our lives, but instead God offers fullness. He gives peace like a river, ever flowing, always fresh, continually renewing. What Jesus offers is real because he is real. When he gives us peace, he gives us himself because he is peace. Listen, church, the world can't handle adversity. They look to drugs. They look to alcohol. They look to sex. They look to false cults for relief as a way of escape. But in contrast, listen to me, you don't need the drugs. You don't need the alcohol. You don't need the immoral sex or, or the uh, pornography or false cults. But in contrast, Jesus is glorified most in his church during times of adversity. These are the times Christianity clearly triumphs over all religions because Jesus faces the crisis head on. And he bestows abundant peace to us in the midst of every trouble. The more we depend on him, the more he pours out on you. Hallelujah. That's what God does. That's the grace of God. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The humble go to God and they cry out to God. And God says, I hear your cry. Here's peace. Here's grace. Here's mercy. Here's joy. Hallelujah. God, I'm going through a trial. Here's some more peace. I'm going through a hardship. Here's some more peace. I'm going through sickness and pain. Here's some more peace for you that will bring you through. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace, the Bible didn't say, but I got a feeling they had the peace of God. Everything's going to be all right. When Daniel was throwing the lions in, I think he had the peace of God. I'm tired. I'm preaching too hard already. <laughs> All right, slow down, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. That's what God's grace does, folks. The problem is we're living in the wrong realm. For you and I both are living by what we see and feel, taste and hear and smell. You know we are. That's the problem. We gotta step up to the next realm. It's time to step up to the next realm. You got to step in to the realm of God's peace. God, God, listen, you might still have the troubles and the trials and the hardships, but the peace of God makes you look at it differently. You're, you're not walking defeated now, but you're walking in victory. Hallelujah. And people look at you and they think, man, all the things that that lady's going through, all the things that guy's going through, all the things that family's going through, yeah, but look at them. They're still faithful to God. Yeah, but look at them. They're still praising God. They're still in prayer. They're still in the Word. They're still doing what they know what's right according to God's Word. They're still serving the Lord. All hell's come against them. All the hardships and trials and difficulties. Yeah, but God's using that to make them stronger. That God gives them the peace of God that passes all understanding. That will guard their hearts and minds through the Lord Jesus Christ. God's going to protect your mind. He's going to protect your thoughts. He's going to protect your heart. I love this because I need to hear this. Believe me. The message isn't for you. It's for me. It really is. Many years ago, right out of Bible college, my wife, my family, my two, my two kids, Michael and Morgan, were two years old at the time. We moved to Bluffton, Ohio. 
west of here, and I worked in a church there, Pentecostal church, as a youth pastor for a couple years. And I went to the Bluffton College there. It was a, uh, it's a Mennonite college. I guess it's still Mennonite. I'm not sure. And I'd go on the campus there, and I would, I would talk to students and so forth. And on the campus, they had a wall. They had a wall, I believe it was behind the, the administration building. They had the names of those that contributed peace engraved in this rock wall or steel wall. And, and the second name, not the first name, but the second name was Jesus Christ. And they put his name up with the many other names that helped, that those that helped to bring peace to humanity. But they didn't get it. You see, first of all, Jesus stands alone. You don't put him next to Dagon. He's not mortal man. He's Lord. And secondly, he didn't contribute to peace. He is peace. <laughs> and this isn't Martin Luther, Jr., the king. This, 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 he's God. He's Lord. Amen. Once you have Jesus, you can do away with all the other small gods, false gods, religious gods. First of all, if you want peace, you have to know him. Christ must be living in our hearts. It's impossible to encounter peace without encountering the Prince of Peace. you got to know God. And if you're saved and born again, you know what I'm talking about. He gives true peace and genuine peace and everlasting peace. He brings peace of heart, peace of mind. In the middle of trials or hardships, he brings to us an assurance and a peace that everything is going to be all right. Buddha can't give this peace because Buddha doesn't have it to give. The world can't give the peace because the world doesn't have it to give. Eastern cultures or religions can't give this peace because they don't have it to give. The only one who can bring peace into your troubled heart is Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior. He's glorious, isn't he? But that's the only way. That's the only way. A lot of Christians that are being tormented in their minds. Good people like yourselves. And the devil is fighting you in your mind and he's warring you in your mind. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? And, and there, he's warring in your thinking and in your thoughts. And he's feeding you, you a bunch of lies that are from the pit of hell. And the devil is causing Christians to worry and to fret and to fear and to be full of anxiety. And they've lost their peace. They're saved, but they're listening far too long to the lies of the devil. And now they're full of anxiety. The unknown, the future. I know, I know, I know exactly where you're at. And, and sometimes we can wonder, worry about the future and what does the future hold and what about my health and what about income and what about doctor bills and what about finances and, and we worry about things. But God's brought you far, this far. He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to help you. The Lord is still God. The problem is we, we're putting our faith on other things rather than the Lord himself. Maybe if we're honest with ourselves, we're full of anxiety because we've gotten away from prayer. Maybe we've gotten away from seeking God. Perhaps we left the prayer closet. Maybe we've lost hope. I don't know your situation. And we just need to get back to doing what the Bible tells us to do. We need to bring everything to God in prayer, everything to God in supplication. Prayer, prayer is talking to God, but supplication is asking of the Lord. And we, we can, don't rush into your prayer closet and just start asking God, but go in there and worship God and exalt him and thank him for who he is and what he's done and how God has met needs in your life and how God has provided, how God has saved your soul. And then we can bring our supplication unto the Lord, asking God everything the Bible says, everything. That means bring every need, bring every concern, bring every situation, bring every fear, bring every anxiety, bring everything every unknown, just bring it to the Lord and ask God to help you. And I know the Lord will. I know he will. And if we sincerely do that, we have the promise in God's word that his peace will guard our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. I don't know how, but, but God does it. It's like, it's like, how did God save you? He just did it. When I asked him, to forgive me of my sins and repented and asked him into my heart by faith. He washed me. 
cleansed me, sanctified me, made me whole, made me new, I'm a new creation. He just did it. You see, God's God. We're not God. And God does supernatural things and, 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 and miracles happen and crazy things happen that we can't explain in the intellectual human fallen nature that we have. But God is God. I mean, how did God take nothing and create the worlds and the universe? There's no other planet like the earth. There's no other human life anywhere but the earth. That, that billions of light years away or whatever they say, they get a, a good photo of a planet. It's not like the earth. God, by his spoken word, put the earth right where he wants it to where we don't freeze to death and we don't burn up. God placed it, the rotation, the, the angle of the axis, the water, the oxygen, the carbon monoxide, life. Explain life. How does a, how is life come into being? God. It has to be God. He's the only one that can do it. How does that bird chirp? God. How, how does that lion roar? God. How, how does that elephant move? God. Everything God created. How God does what? God saves. God puts the peace and the joy in my heart and my mind. It's of the Lord as I put my trust in him. I'm not going to focus on the problem. I'm going to focus on the problem solver. Hallelujah. As we come to him by faith, the Bible says if we will pray and bring our supplication to God with thanksgiving, that, that by faith he guards and protects our minds and our thoughts. Uh, he protects our, our minds, our hearts, and he protects our thoughts. And, and what, it, what it means is, is, that, is that God puts a, a garrison around us. It's, it's like an army of soldiers he puts around a city or, or a, a, a community, whatever it might be, to protect those people inside. It's a garrison. And I believe that God supernaturally sends his angels around our minds. And I believe that when the devil comes in with those bad thoughts and lies, this is just me, you can ask the Lord when you get to heaven, but those angels, I believe, have a flaming sword. And they, when one comes in, they're like, <laughs> and they're blocking, hallelujah, they're blocking the lies of the devil from coming into our hearts and into our minds and our thinking. Glory to God. He puts a garrison around you. His angels are his, his bidding servants, uh, if you will, to do his work. And God can put them around us uh, to guard and to protect us. It's possible for the church to have the peace of God in these troubled times. And regardless of what people do, regardless of what protesters do, regardless of what the government does, God's in control and he can give you peace. Let it be a testimony to others. When the world has fallen apart, when the world's going crazy, come on, we got government officials leading this country that say a man can get pregnant. That's stupid. That's dumb. All right, men, who's going to be the first one here? And you got people that do not have the ability to reason between what's right and wrong, and so they repubate. Repubate people are leading this country, selling our oil to China. Get it quick, quick, Mark, quick, quick, before you get it, quick, 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 stop it. It's terrible, but that's what's going on. This is a crazy time we're living in. Crazy time that you can have Multiple genders, whatever you, whatever you want to be, that's what you can be. A five-year-old can make a decision for a boy to be turned into a girl or a girl into a boy. I don't know. Are you kidding me? They're not old enough to vote, but they're going to let them make that kind of decision. They're not old enough to drive. They're not old enough to, to buy a house. <laughs> You're going to let them make a decision like that? We're living in the most repubate 
society we had ever seen in our lives. And all this is just telling us that Jesus is going to be here sooner than you think. That's what this is telling us. Jesus is going to be here sooner than you think. God made two genders, male and female. Understand that. They're not multiple, even though they want to call themselves multiple. I guess there are 30-something different genders, whatever you want to say. Even, even, even the natural animal kingdom out there doesn't have that kind of reprobate thinking. They know better than that. But I'm telling you, you got to stick to what the Bible, no matter what society does, no matter, no matter what the government does, no matter what people do, no matter what, we're going to hold to the Bible. We're going to hold to what God's Word says. Hallelujah. When the world is falling apart, when the world is going crazy and reprobate, when the world is going mad, let them see the testimony of God's assurance and stability and peace in your life. Listen, for those that delight themselves in God, the scripture says, and I'm coming to a close. Abby, would you come? Because that helps me come to a close, okay? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's you. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. God's God blessing you. That's God's favor upon your life. Now, Jesus said this. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world give, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid. Church, that's what God's saying to us. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. we got troubles. We've got trials. We're all going through it. But we're going we're gonna to take it to Jesus. We're going to take it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet here today? Praise the Lord. I just know that I feel and what I see and what I sense and what I have exp I've seen where the devil and I see where many good people of God are just going through things in their lives right now. And in the middle of the night, the devil wakes you up when it's quiet and it's dark. And he starts tormenting your mind. He's tormenting your thoughts. You say, Pastor, that's me. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Just raise your hand. Say, the devil's tormenting my thoughts, my mind. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Maybe you've lost your peace through trials. Maybe you've lost your peace through difficulties and through setbacks. But that doesn't mean that God isn't with you. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It just means we got to get back to doing what the instructions of the Word of God says. Maybe we're not bringing everything to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. But it's time to find that prayer closet again. It's time to find it. That we can be full, not of anxiety, not of fear, not of doubt, not of unbelief, but be full of God and His presence and His peace. With every head bowed, every eye closed, hallelujah. My dear beloved friends, is there anybody here today that would say, Pastor Mark, first of all, I'm not saved. I don't know the Lord, but I want to come to know Christ today. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. I want to accept Him into my heart. If that's you today, would you just raise your hand? Pastor Mark, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm, thank you. Thank you. Pray for me. Pray for me. I'm not living for the Lord. Pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ today. I'm not running anymore. I want to give my life to Jesus. Anybody? You're here today, and maybe th this message is talking to you as if you're the only one in this room. It's as if God made this for you, and God is talking to you. Maybe you've lost your joy. You've lost the peace of God, and your hearts are full of anxiety and fear. And you would say, Pastor Mark, pray for me. Just raise your hand. Pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pray for me. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you might admit today and say, Pastor Mark, you know what? I've been trying to handle things myself, and I'm not taking everything to God like the Bible tells me to. I'm not taking everything to the Lord. I've gotten away from prayer. I've gotten away from the prayer closet. Maybe God's just talking to you. Would you raise your hand? Say, pray for me, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to bring it all to God. 
I want to bring it all to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, my beloved friends, I just want to pray with you this morning. Whether you raise your hand or not, I would like to invite you to come stand up here in the front of this altar here. Just step out of your pew and come to the front of this altar, and I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for the body of Christ. I want to, I want to ask the Lord to put a supernatural peace into our hearts once again. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God by faith. Hallelujah. The devil is not going to run my life. The devil is not going to dictate my life. I'm going to cast him out in the name of Jesus. Everybody, if you would, I'm asking the whole church if you would come. The whole church. I just want the whole church, if you're willing, I want you to come that we might pray together. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Come on around this way. Got plenty of room over here. And come and let's worship God. Come and let's praise Him. Come and let's glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. We praise your heavenly Father. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know how the devil fights. I know it. I know how he fights. I know that. But you know what? Our assurance is in God. Our assurance is in the Lord. Praise God. First and foremost, the most important thing in your life is to know Jesus as your Savior. To know God. To surrender your life to Him. To repent of your sins and say, God, I am a sinner. And I come to the living Savior asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole, Lord. I accept you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. That is something you have to do. You have to believe the Lord. Like when Philip was ministering to the Ethiopian eunuch, he was talking to him out of the book of Isaiah. And they came across some water, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But they came across some water, and the eunuch says, what's keeping me from being baptized? And Philip told him, you got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I believe. Hallelujah. I believe. And there he was baptized in water. You see, it comes down to this. you got to believe in your heart. Believe in Christ and surrender your heart to him by faith. Asking him to be your Lord and your Savior. I know that some of us are being tormented in our thoughts. The future, the unknown, what's going to happen. I can't tell you about the unknown. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know. But all I know is that we can put our trust in God. All I know is that we can take it to the Lord. We can take it to God. And we can give it to the Lord. And we can bring it by prayer and supplication. Our every need to God. God delights in that. God wants us to do that. We can surrender our will to Him. We can surrender our thoughts to Him. No longer are we going to believe the lies of the devil, but we'll stand upon the word of the Lord our God. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, we will trust him. In the name of Jesus, we will believe in him. Praise God. If you would just either hold the hand or touch the shoulder of the person next to you or between you, whatever it might be, I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord, almighty God. Hallelujah. Father, almighty God, as we come to you, the name of the Lord. Father, I praise you. I worship you. We come to you by faith in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, God, for the promises of the Lord that are yes and amen. And I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord, for my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Perhaps the devil has been fighting him, feeding him a bunch of lies, telling him things that are not true or according to God's word. But I pray for my brothers and my sisters that as we come to you by faith, Lord, as we are not anxious for anything but everything by prayer and supplication, we will bring our request unto you. We will pray to you. We will come into your presence. We will lay our load and our burden at the feet of Jesus. Right now, God, I lay my burden at the feet of Jesus. I lay my burden at the foot of the cross. I cast my cares upon you because you care for me. And I lay my burden, I lay my sorrow, I lay my fears, I lay my anxieties, I lay my unknowns, I lay it at the foot of the cross. I give it to Christ. I, by faith, give it to the Lord. I give it to God. I give it to God. I give it to the Lord. I give it to Jesus. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, God, I worship you. And, God, I need you. I need you. I come by faith 
and I come into your presence and I surrender my will and my life to you. I surrender my heart to you. Oh God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. Let there be a supernatural peace from heaven that will touch and penetrate their hearts and minds. Lord, put your angels around them to be a garrison. Lord God, to protect our thoughts and to protect their minds. God, I bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I need you. I praise you. I worship you. I magnify you, oh God. I glorify the Lord. I glorify the Lord. I give you my heart. I surrender. Hallelujah. Help me, God, to be more active in prayer. Help me to be more faithful in prayer. Help me to learn to do what the instructions of God's Word says. To bring my fears and my anxieties. To bring everything to Christ. To bring it all to God by faith. I pray for my brothers and my sisters that you will supernaturally bless them, supernaturally strengthen them. I pray, God, that they'll have spiritual thoughts. And the Holy Ghost will put the scriptures in their minds, the scriptures that will feed their soul and strengthen them throughout the day and the week. God, let us hold on to Christ. Let us believe you by faith. Surrender to you today, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm asking you to heal the sick. Right now, the Bible says that there's a balm in Gilead. The Bible tells us that by his stripes that we're healed. And what that means is that what Jesus did on the cross, when he died in our place, when he took our judgment, when he gave his life and shed his blood, not only, not only for our redemption, but what I understand in the scriptures, also for our physical healing. Spiritual first, you must be saved, but then also the physical healing. The Bible says that his name is Jehovah Rapha. That means that in his character, in his name who describes what he is, he is our physician. He is our surgeon. So I feel this way, that in the same way I put my faith and trust in Jesus and the work of the cross to be saved. I must put my faith and trust in Jesus and the work of the cross to be healed. Hallelujah. So that's what I want us to do. I want us to do that. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need a healing touch of the Lord. I want you to go to Christ. And I want us to remember the finished work of the cross and what he did for us at Calvary. In the same way that he saved us, I want us to put our faith in what he did for healing. What he did for healing, for his stripe, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Glory to God. Father, I come to you. I put my trust in the great physician. I put my trust in Christ and what you've done for me at Calvary. Lord God, you took my sin. You took my burden. You took my load. You washed me. But God, you took my sickness. God, you took my sickness. And God, I come to you and I'm asking God by faith. That God, that I'd receive the healing from, the, from what you've done for us at Calvary. I'll receive as we touch the hem of your garment. I believe by faith, Lord God, in what you have already done. I appropriate, I accept, I believe, I receive it now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm believing right now that cancer be gone in the name of Jesus. I, I, I'm believing right now that diabetes be gone in the name of Jesus. I, I believe right now that those that have a nervous condition, a nerve condition, that it be gone in Jesus' name, a heart condition be gone in Jesus' name. I pray for healing. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray for this right now. Those that are watching Lord, I pray for them. I lift them up before you. Heal them, Lord. Lord, you've already done this for us at Calvary. Lord, save me and I'll be saved. Heal me and I'll be healed. You sent your word and you healed them. Praise God. The blood, the Bible says in Colossians 1 and 14, is sufficient. And I come to Christ. So my beloved friends... Believe the Lord today for a miracle. Believe God for a miracle right now. Say, I receive healing by faith. 
through the cross. By faith, I receive healing through the cross of Christ, through what Christ has done through him, through the work of Christ. He shed his blood. So I believe it in my redemption and also the redemption of my physical healing. I'm asking now, Lord, for a miracle. I pray for a miracle. Let your faith be built up today. Let your faith be encouraged and strengthened today to believe the Lord. With God, nothing's impossible. Whatever you're facing, we're going to take it to the Lord by faith. Take it to God by faith. Believe Him by faith. Believe it now. Accept it. Receive it. Appropriate it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I turned to somebody and said, I believe it and I receive it. I believe it, I receive it. <laughs> I believe it, I receive it. I believe it, I receive it. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. You may return to your seats if you like. Praise the Lord. What we're going to do here, and this will conclude this part of the service, all the baptismal candidates, if you want to find, we got three restrooms you can change into. We've got a side, a couple side rooms here and three side rooms here. We have rooms downstairs also that have doors that close. If you would like to change, you can. You can meet us at the garage. I'm going to have some guys set up a couple canopies real quick.